moment 40. With 18 laps to go in the 1988 Daytona 500, Bobby Allison, followed closely by his son Davey, took the lead. What a tremendous family performance. The close finish marked the third time in NASCAR history a father and son finished 1-2, while the elder Allison at 50 became the oldest Daytona 500 champion. Moment 39, April 1993. Alan Kowicki died when his small plane crashed en route to a race in Bristol, Tennessee. In his abbreviated NASCAR career, Kowicki amassed five victories, 75 top 10 finishes, and the 1992 Winston Cup. He was just 38 years old. Moment 38. Running second behind Darrell Waltrip, Rusty Wallace made a controversial move to win the 1989 Winston All-Star Race. After the race in the garage area, a scuffle broke out between the Waltrip and Wallace pit crew. The tempers are hot when there's that much money on the line. Moment 37. Just three months after Alan Kowicki died in a plane crash, tragedy struck another NASCAR driver in July 1993. Mr. Allison died this morning at Caraway Memphis Medical Center. Former Rookie of the Year and Daytona 500 champion Davey Allison died of injuries suffered in a helicopter crash at Talladega. He was just 32. Moment 36. On December 1st, 1963, Wendell Scott became the one and only African-American to win at NASCAR's highest level. Driving a year-old car purchased from Ned Jarrett, Scott outpaced Buck Baker on the half-mile dirt track at Speedway Park in Jacksonville to take the checkered flag. Moment 35. In October of 2001, NASCAR mandated that all Winston Cup, Grand National, and Truck Series drivers will wear head and neck restraints. The decision came after four drivers, Adam Petty, Kenny Irwin, Blaze Alexander, and Dale Earnhardt Sr. died in a span of just 17 months. Moment 34. After winning Rookie of the Year, Dale Earnhardt set his sights on the 1980 points championship. He then proceeded to win five races and build a 29-point lead before placing fifth in the season finale, the LA Times 500. Good to his word, the Intimidator had won his first of seven season titles. Moment 33. In 1989, Darrell Waltrip ended years of frustration when he finally won the great American race. The Daytona 500 belongs to Darrell Waltrip. He's done it. In victory lane, Waltrip did his take on a new celebration dance created by NFL running back Icky Woods, the Icky Shuffle. Moment 32, ending a three-decade relationship with R.J. Reynolds and Winston, NASCAR announced a 10-year, $70 million per year deal in June 2003 with Nextel as the new series sponsor. It was the richest rights and promotion deal ever struck in professional sports. Moment 31, Dale Earnhardt went looking for his 10th career victory at Talladega in October 2000. Dale will take his 10th career victory at Talladega. Coming from 18th place to first in the final three laps, it was the 76th and final NASCAR win of Earnhardt's storied career. Moment 30, June 1949. Running in NASCAR's first ever Strictly Stock Race, Glenn Dunaway took the checkered flag at Charlotte Speedway. But when a post-race inspection of his car revealed that pieces of steel had been welded illegally, Dunaway was disqualified, and Jim Roper was awarded the victory. Moment 29, the most hotly contested race in NASCAR history was run at Talladega in May of 1984. 
The last of a record 75 lead changes among 13 drivers occurred on the final lap when Cale Yarborough passed Harry Gant to take the checkered flag. Moment 28. NASCAR history was made on January 31st, 1960, when CBS Sports Spectacular broadcast live the pole position races for the Daytona 500. CBS two-hour coverage at Daytona marked the first program devoted entirely to stock car racing. Moment 27. In January of 1972, NASCAR's 62-year-old founder, Bill France Sr., known as Big Bill, passed the keys of the kingdom to his son, 38-year-old Bill Jr. Big Bill rose from mechanic to part-time driver to become one of the most influential figures in auto racing. Moment 26. In August of 1981, Richard Childers gave up his seat behind the wheel of his number three car to Dale Earnhardt. They split after one season. But in 1984, they reunited to form one of the most potent owner-driver partnerships in NASCAR history, winning six series championships. Moment 25, August 2001, six months after the stunning death of Dale Earnhardt, NASCAR's investigation revealed that a broken lap belt contributed to a blunt force trauma to the head. Soon after, sweeping safety changes were announced, including mandated head and neck restraints, on-site medical advisors, and the creation of a new NASCAR Research and Development Center. Moment 24. The crowd cheers, and here we go, the race is on. The running of the Atlanta Journal 500 in November of 1989 marked the first time that every race in NASCAR's top division had been televised. Dale Earnhardt won the season finale, and Rusty Wallace finished 15th to garner enough points to capture the cup championship. Moment 23. September 1969, Talladega's first ever race was mired in controversy. Amid safety concerns over tires and excessively high speeds, the newly formed Professional Drivers Association boycotted the race. NASCAR founder Bill France recruited replacement drivers, and the 500 miles were run without major incident. Moment 22. In January 2004, NASCAR announced a change to its season point system. After the first 26 races of the year, the top 10 drivers up to that point would then have a chance to compete in the final 10 races for NASCAR's season title and a $5 million prize. The chase for the championship was born. Moment 21. North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, October 1967. Richard Petty capped the most dominating season in NASCAR history by winning his 10th consecutive race. All told, Richard won a record 27 races in 1967, more than half the events he entered. He was crowned King Richard. Moment 22. 